Hello and welcome back to Bosch tutorial series. Um, in this video, we will be going through some of the common terminology that we'll be using throughout the tutorial series. Uh, this will be a brief listing of those specific Bosch components and what do they stand for. Don't worry if some of the terminology is still foreign to you at the end of the video. We'll be having separate sessions for each of these components later on. Before we dig deeper, let's do a quick recap of how to think about Bosch. Uh, as we have mentioned before, let's imagine it as a black box VM that somebody created for us. Uh, this black box VM has a process running on it that we interact with using a command line tool we call the Bosch CLI. Uh, then we tell Bosch somehow to create a few VMs and to deploy our software on them. To start, the, our first term will be the Bosch Director. Um, in the Bosch domain, the Bosch Director term can refer mainly to two things, where you will see users use them interchangeably. The first term it's used for to refer to the Bosch VM itself. For example, we will say let's create a Bosch Director. What that really means is let's create a VM and install the Bosch software on it. The second way that the Bosch Director term will be used for is to refer to a very specific process that is running on the Bosch VM alongside other processes. And as you may have guessed by now, there are multiple Bosch related processes running on the Bosch VM. One of them is called the Bosch Director. Let's think about it now as an HTTP server that receives requests and act accordingly. Uh, and by the way, the term, the second term, which is the actual process running on the VM, is the more correct technical term for the Bosch Director. Our next term will be the Bosch CLI, or the Bosch Command Line Interface. The CLI is an executable binary that you can download from the Bosch website and execute on your local machine. The CLI serves two main purposes. The first one, it enables the user to communicate with the Bosch director and send it specific commands. This communication is done over HTTPS. The second purpose for the CLI is to help package the software in a format that the Bosch director understands so that it can run that package software. We're gonna cover that bit a bit later. Currently, the CLI is supported on Linux and Mac systems with partial support on Microsoft Windows. The third term will be stem cell. When we create the Bosch VM or when we tell the Bosch director process, which is on the Bosch VM, to create a set of VMs and deploy software on them, the base OS image used in the creation of these VMs is called a stem cell. These OS images can be downloaded from the official Bosch website. If you're familiar with AWS, an easy way to think about it, which is a stem cell, is as a custom AMI that you can use to create the VMs. In more official terms, a stem cell is a versioned operating system image wrapped with IaaS specific packaging. For example, if you're using VMware vSphere, the official stem cell for Ubuntu Trusty, the official Bosch stem cell for Ubuntu Trusty, is approximately 500 megabyte VMDK file. With AWS, the official stem cell are published as AMIs that can be used in your AWS account. The fourth term we're gonna cover is the agent. Also, we call it the Bosch agent. It's the process that runs continuously on each VMs when that the Bosch deploys. The agent executes tasks in response to the messages it receives from the Bosch director. So let's say we somehow tell the Bosch director using the CLI we want three VMs, Tomcat, Postgres, and two Postgreses. Whenever Bosch creates those VMs from the stem cell, a process called the Bosch agent will start up on boot and it will call back home, which is the Bosch director. This way, the Bosch director knows those VMs were and start to communicate with them and then send them tasks to do. For example, it can send them to install the software of our choice, to start it, 
and to manage many other uh, configurations on the VM and software. The agent binary itself is baked inside the stem cell used to create the VM, so there is usually no need for user intervention in its lifecycle. One thing actually to notice in the diagram is that you can see there's also an agent running on the actual Bosch VM itself, not only the VMs that it creates. And this agent serves an interesting purpose that we're going to cover later in the series. The next term will be, the fifth term will be the Bosch release. So till now we know that Bosch can create VMs and install some software on them, the software of our choice. For Bosch to be able to do that, one of the steps that we need to do is to package our software in a specific format that Bosch can understand. The outcome of this packaging is called a Bosch release. So for example, if we want to package Apache Tomcat into a format that Bosch can run, we call that specific package a Bosch release of Tomcat, or let's say a Bosch release of Postgres or a Bosch release of RabbitMQ. This way we give that actual tarpole or package to the Bosch VM, to the Bosch director in particular, and it knows what to do with it and to deploy it and to run it. It's also important to mention that a Bosch release, sh release should be self-contained. So it should contain the actual software itself that we need to run, the compilation time dependencies for that software, and also the runtime dependencies for that software. In addition to that, it contains also, it should contain the configuration scripts that tells Bosch how to run it and how to compile it and how to configure the software itself. Um, don't worry if this sounds a bit confusing for now, we will cover that in detail later on. Our sixth term will be a deployment manifest. When we give Bosch a compressed tarball of a software, that is, a Bosch release of our software, for example, a Bosch release of RabbitMQ or Postgres, we also need to give it certain configurations that tells Bosch what to do with that software. This configuration is provided as a YAML file to the Bosch director through the CLI. So for example, what things it's going to contain, it will contain how many VMs you want to deploy, what to put on those VMs, uh, the size of the VMs that you need, if you need a disk attached to that VM or not, and many other configurations, which we will go into deep details later on. So that will be the deployment manifest. The last term we'll cover is the CPI, or the Cloud Provider Interface. For the Bosch director to be able to create VMs or perform any IaaS specific actions, it will need to communicate with the IaaS of choice. So that's the responsibility of the CPI. A CPI is created for one single IaaS. So for example, there's an AWS CPI, a vSphere CPI, OpenStack CPI. All of them are separate softwares. But all of them implement a certain interface that the director understands. So all of them share the same interface, interface that they need to implement. This interface, without going into many details, which we'll cover later, contains common actions that are coming to all ISs. For example, creating and deleting VMs, attaching, creating, creating, attaching, and deleting disks, and some other common IS actions. It's also worth it to mention that it's possible to have a director configured with multiple CPIs. That is, you can deploy VMs on multiple IASs using the same Bosch director. Um, just to go through a simple example of how a CPI is used, you provide through the CLI a deployment manifest, which we talked about. The YAML configuration, you tell it, I want to create one VM. So that deployment manifest is sent to the director sitting and the running on the Bosch VM. And the director itself will communicate with the CPI of choice that is also on the Bosch VM itself. And in, in turn, in its turn, the CPI will communicate with the IS. So the director doesn't directly interact with the IS. It just interacts with the CPI 
through an interface. And the CPI, AWS, OpenStack, GCP, etc., will communicate with the IS to perform those actions. So it's basically you plug it, you plug any CPI that you want to use. In summary, we cover around seven items in this series, in this video. Um, those, there's many other terms, but those are a collection of things that we need to start using in this uh, video series so that we know how to start and get into the Bosch world uh, one step at a time. So it's the director, and we know that the director is the, think about it as the brain um, of the whole system. We have the CLI, the command line interface used by the user. Uh, we have the stem cell, which is the base OS image used to create all the VMs that the Bosch creates, including Bosch itself. Uh, the agent, which is a process that is baked, so which is a binary that is baked inside the stem cell. And whenever you create a VM from that stem cell, that, pr that process will run and it will perform actions of whatever the director tells it to. Uh, we talked about the Bosch release, which is the collection, which is the collection of software that we need to make Bosch deploy, and it contains specific things in a very specific format. Um, we also talked about the deployment manifest, which is a YAML file that we give to the director to tell it what to do with our software, how many VMs we need to create, etc. And finally, we talked about the CPI, the Cloud Provider Interface, and that's the adapter that the director uses to communicate with different IASs, and we have a CPI for each IAS, so they will be separate CPIs for each IAS, but all of them implement the same interface that the director understands. Don't worry if some of these terms still seems unfamiliar yet, uh, as we'll be covering them multiple times as we proceed in details. Uh, thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.